As you could see from the previous lesson in this chapter, exporting, at least basically, is pretty straightforward. But I'm going to guarantee something right here if I were a betting man. I would guarantee that you're going to export a lot and you're going to want to use the same settings more than one time. Now, if we go to the word file on the pull down menu and go down to export, you do have export with previous. It always remembers the last thing you did. If you haven't exported in six months, it's still going to remember what you did six months ago. And if you've never ever changed your export, I guess that would work for you. We're going to make our own. Go to the word export and make a preset. So let's say at university, and I do this, I send them a lot of test photographs, lots of things, and say, well, what do you think about these? And they're small, they're compressed, basically they're put together so they can see them and make an idea if they want to use them, and then they come back to me and say, we want this one, this one, this one. So they'd be like small JPEGs. So I want to put them into a subfolder inside of Lightroom Exports, and we're going to call this one Previews. All right, I want to be asked what to do just in case. I don't want to rename them. That's fine too. Down here on file settings, though, I want to change from a TIFF to a JPEG. These are images for them just to look at. I'm not really all that concerned about quality. So I'm going to run these at about, let's take that down to about 40. And again, I can never get the number that I want. If you can't, of course, you can type it in over here. But let me mention one other thing while we're here. Limit the file size to. What is that? If you select it, quality grays out, and you say, okay, JPEG these guys and make them all around 100K. Whether that's a 10% compression or a 30%, that's a nice one if you really want to limit the size to a certain specific K. I'm turn that back off. Leave that at 40. My color space, because they're going to be looking at these on a monitor, is going to be sRGB. If they're going to print them, I'd probably use Profoto RGB. That's relatively new, but it's good. You do have some other ones if you want to choose something else. That's it. I don't want to output for sharpening. Metadata, yeah, I want the copyright in there. But watermarking is something else I want to add here. Because I don't want them taking these, not that they would in saying, oh, we can use these. Why don't we just use the samples he gave us because, hey, it's just on the internet. So I want to put a watermark on these things. I'm going to click here. And if you click here, I do have one called Double A Copyright. I already made that. It's just really Andy Anderson with C for copyright on it. It's already set up. Post-processing, yeah, show them the finder. But I'm not ready to use this. I'm just setting it up. So I'm going to say Add right here. And I'm going to call this RU for Rockers University previews with watermark. Go ahead and click create. Oh, I would recommend that you put them into the user's preset folder. That's a default. If you don't, then they won't appear over here. Go ahead and click create. There's no reason for you to put them anywhere else anyway. And if I want to go back to something else, if I have something, I can go here, export to DNG. These are the ones that come with the system. Burn full size JPEGs, but here's my RU previews. So you develop these as you watch what you're doing and you see, oh yeah, I do this a lot. I think I'll make a preset for this. You also have a remove button down here if you want to get rid of it. So you know what? That's how you save time. Make presets. On to the next.